Good evening, I'm Marty Olson, and welcome to City Focus. And uh, tonight, I'm uh, delighted that I've got two pinch hit guests that came in at the 11th hour. Uh, my scheduled guest, uh, Barbara Major, called me late this morning, and uh, a conflict had developed, and she was unable to uh, to come on the program. So uh, our focus is going to change from uh, this local school board and education to uh, community service and, and giving back and uh, I've got uh, two gentlemen who I've known for a long time uh, the presidents of the New London Kiwanis Club John Russell and the New London Alliance Club Sam Linder and I'd like to welcome you guys aboard welcome Marty good to see you thank you Marty well I appreciate both you guys uh, coming together here uh, on very very short notice and uh, uh, I think we'll have a, an interesting program. I uh, would also like to, before we get uh, too involved, to give a, a plug to a couple of young folks who have been working on the program for me now for the better part of a month, and they're representing the Drop-In Learning Center. Uh, Zell Morales, a, an eighth grade student at the Isaac School, and Dakia James, who's a seventh grade student at the Benny Dover Jackson Middle School, and they are working in the back in the control room this evening. Uh, so. Their work is very well, and uh, thanks for coming back. And these kids do a great job, and I'm, I'm pleased to have them have that opportunity to see the equipment, work with things, and maybe be exposed to some stuff that uh, they may not uh, normally have opportunity to. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely fantastic that we have these two, two youngsters here doing this. I mean, I, when I was an eighth grader, I wouldn't know what the inside of a control room or a, or a, or a television studio looked like. What a, what a great experience to have for these kids. It's just wonderful. So, I think, uh, you know, like I say, it's, it's good stuff. Many years ago, I used to uh, uh, host a program that was dedicated purely to Kiwanis. And uh, it was a taped program. And at the time, um, we had a, a builder's club at the Lime Old Lime Middle School. And we used to make that a middle school project and bring the kids down here and they'd work the cameras and they'd work in the back and do all sorts of stuff. And uh, it was a lot of fun. The kids had a lot of fun. And when we transitioned to a different host for the program at that time, uh, he wasn't as enthused about having the youth. I uh, found him a bit, a bit of a distraction, so that kind of disappeared. But uh, it is what it is, and uh, I'm glad to have these youngsters aboard now. That's the big thing, is what's going on at the moment. Um, you know, one of the reasons I thought <coughs> that this program tonight with the Joint uh, uh, Service Club interaction is, uh, this Thursday is the annual uh, Yale Harvard uh, luncheon that's hosted by Rotary, but it's a joint service club luncheon, which includes the Kiwanis Club uh, and the Lions Club. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of bring everybody together and uh, kind of discuss what we do and who we are. And uh, uh, quite frankly, I don't think necessarily that a lot of folks in the community have a real good feel for uh, the presence of the service clubs. So. Uh, I'm going to give Sam first crack, if you don't mind, John. We, we, Please, I think he's, he's your guest, and I think you should. And he's certainly decked out tonight. I just wore my pin and my, and my Kiwanis tie. So, uh, Sam, why don't you kind of give us an overview of, of your club? I mean, how long you've been in business and uh, how long you've been a member and the, some of the primary projects uh, that, that you guys embark on, uh, whether it be locally or perhaps uh, at a larger scale or international. Well, the New London Lions uh, just uh, celebrated our 90th uh, anniversary. Uh, we had a big event at the Grand Inn and Suites uh, just about a month and a half ago. And uh, we had just about 100 uh, people in attendance. And we had representatives of about 27 of the 56 clubs in District 23C uh, in the state of Connecticut. The state of Connecticut is, is uh, separated into three districts. The Eastern Zone District is called District 23C. Um, our New London Lions Club currently has a membership roster of about 44 members from uh, throughout uh, Eastern Connecticut. Now there are Lions Clubs that currently exist in Waterford, Niantic, Old Saybrook, Groton, Mystic, Colchester and so, so there are a lot of Lions Clubs. Lions Club, Lions Club International is the largest international civic organization currently. Uh, Rotary is very close in, in uh, numbers uh, but uh, New, uh, Lions is, uh, 
is a pretty large, is a large presence in the United States. Um, if you, if when one enters uh, the town of New London, you'll see signs welcoming people to New London, and there's a, a brand new sign. Uh, um, are, you, are you familiar with it, that? Are you aware of the fact that there's going to be a big, big giant sign at the intersection of uh, Williams and Huntington Street featuring a whole bunch of uh, civic organizations on one side and then religious organizations on the other. Mm -hmm. So the signage that you see, uh, we have New London Lions currently have three signs uh, welcoming uh, people into town at three different locations. Kiwanis has a few also, and but this joint sign is going to be is is going to be real nice uh, at uh, New London Gardens location. Right at the, have you ever seen that right off the highway? Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. So uh, we have a lot of interesting projects, and I'll go into those later. Okay, and John, why don't you kind of give our viewers a little overview of the New London Kiwanis Club? <coughs> Well, New London Qantas, I think we've been in business for about 70. Overall, uh, Qantas was founded almost 100 years ago. It'll be 100 years in 2015. Uh, we have approximately 37 members in our club. And uh, our whole thing is about kids. In fact, I'll br briefly read our defining statement. Qantas is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to changing the world one child and one community at a time. Our mission is to serve the children of the world, and our motto is we build. Uh, some of the objects, and I, I find this very, uh, one of the reasons I got involved is some of the things that they do. Uh, some of the objects of Kiwanis are they're, they're to give primacy to the human and spiritual rather than the material values of life to encourage the daily living of the golden rule in all human relationships, to promote the adoption and application of higher social, business, and professional standards, to develop by precept and example a more intelligent, aggressive, and serviceable citizenship, to provide through Kiwanis clubs a practical means to form enduring friendships, to render altruistic service and to better build communities, and to cooperate in creating and maintaining that sound public opinion and high idealism which make possible the increase of righteousness, justice, patriotism, and goodwill. Now those, those objects were adopted in 1924 at the International Convention in Denver, and they have never been changed. They, so they've been standing the test of time, and I think they speak volumes about what we believe in, and, and uh, I know that when I have had the pleasure of uh, inducting a new member, I always uh, uh, will read those and ask uh, the new member if, you know, if they agree to that. And I think it's important that folks understand what they're being asked to get involved with. And I'm sure the Lions must have some similar type of uh, uh, ideals. Yeah, our motto is, our international motto is we serve. And uh, I, I brought a few props with me here. A few. A few props. Uh, these are gloves. Uh, these represent the hands-on uh, service that we give. Um, we also had a big, giant project that we undertook this past year in the wake of um, Superstorm Sandy. Uh, um, Lions International allocated uh, $10,000, an emergency grant of $10,000 to this particular uh, Eastern Connecticut area, which was highly impacted by the, by the, by the superstorm. And with uh, some of that money, uh, about $2,600 of it, uh, we, uh, our club, New Lennon Lions, um, uh, worked with ShopRite very closely, and we uh, purchased, we negotiated, um, for about $2,600 worth of uh, product. And we then turned that all over to the New London, um, the General Moran um, food, center. food Center here in New London. And uh, we tried to replenish their, a lot of the foodstuffs that they had distributed. And uh, that's uh, like for the Oklahoma uh, tornadoes, um, disaster that's still occurring, uh, Lions International has contributed a 
$100,000 emergency grant to that area, which uh, the local lions in that area of Oklahoma are using to help um, with emergency worker for emergency workers or and help in other needs Wh whatever the needs wherever the needs are lions are so I, I just want to and we're about kids as it says you know what is lions it mean it, this is their main thing that's I, I haven't got that yet so I <laughs> I, I'm know. sorry I didn't bring that out it's uh, uh the the big thing is uh, helping those that are sight impaired yeah. So you'll see around town collection boxes, at least in New London, there are, I believe, 13 or 14 collection boxes for uh, used eyeglasses. And those eyeglasses are then um, are put together, uh, grouped together, and in um, late May, uh, the New London Alliance brought up boxes of glasses to a collection center that was um, uh, located that that was located this year in Colchester, and uh, Lions groups from around Lions clubs from around the district 23C um, hoarded together about 14,000 pair of glasses, I believe, for and those and those glasses eventually were shipped off overseas and recycled. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know you have one at the senior center because whenever I drop my dad off, I always see it. And I have put things in. Actually. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you know, one, of, one of the things I think that's interesting is that um, with the service clubs, Rotary, Lions, Kiwanis, uh, my introduction to all these organizations, as well as some of the uh, veterans organizations, the uh, VFW and the American Legion, uh, you the KSCs, the, uh, you know, the Elks, has been as, as a youth because all these organizations in New London have sponsored minor league and baseball, uh, little league baseball teams and Babe Ruth teams. So as a youth, all these organizations are giving back to the local community, uh, supporting these leagues. Yeah, you'll remember back when we played little league baseball, uh, I know you were on the bankers, the big, you, had, you were the big left-handed power hitter. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. You play, I think you played first base, right? Uh, I did. Well, there was also, I, I was on the Lehigh team, uh, but there was also a Lions club, a Lions team, and I think there was a Kiwanis team, a KFC. There was a KFC. KFC. It wasn't Kiwanis, Kiwanis had a team in the Babe Ruth League. Oh. And we also have been sponsoring a minor league baseball team for, and still do, it's been over 50 years, the Kiwis. I think that's a tremendous, uh, I think that's a good, uh, a good way to spend your money, a real good way to spend your money, and to get free publicity. I mean, those kids wear those uniforms all over the area. Well, I got to tell you, Little League Baseball was real important in my life growing up, too. And I grew up, I did not grow up here. I grew up in, in New Jersey. But I played Little League Baseball, and I played for the local fire department. Oh. Park Fire was the team I played for, both through the minor leagues and through the major leagues. So, same experience. It's just wonderful to have these groups that are sponsoring. Because we couldn't do it otherwise. Right. Um, these groups, these youth groups need civic organizations to sponsor them and um, I'm, I'm very happy that our club has been sponsoring a softball team for a number of years in, t in town. Is yeah. that a men's or women's softball? It's a, gr it's a girls, yeah. girls team. Yeah, I mean one of the things, I mean, and I'm glad you brought up with the eye uh, glasses and eye care and eyewear because that's something that uh, the Lions Club is certainly well known and identified with globally. That if you're talking about Lions, that's something that everybody grabs a hold of uh, the Rotary Club, uh, I, I would say is known for the Rotary Scholars and they have a Rotary Exchange program and, and many years ago uh, they raised a significant amount of money for, uh, uh, for research to eliminate polio. Uh, and Kiwanis, uh, I'll be very honest, uh, and I've been at this now for 26 years, is that uh, we've been grappling with trying to get that identifying uh, component that we could wrap our arms around. And I think that John outlined that when he opened up with our defining statement. And uh, at an international level, the organization has uh, tackled one international program to eliminate iodine deficiency disorders, which we successfully concluded. And we've recently embarked on a new one to eliminate uh, maternal neonatal tetanus so we've been getting involved with medical issues at a global level trying to uh,
take care of, of, of disease that, uh, uh, and, and we work with, uh, in conjunction with UNICEF, so we partner with another agency. Uh, but the key, I think a key is people don't join the Lions or Kiwanis or Rotary to solve these problems per se, they're joining because of what we do in our local communities. And one of the things I like about Kiwanis, and I suspect it's the same for your organization, is that the autonomy to meet local needs, whatever they may be. And uh, I mean, our, our club, I mean, John, why don't you speak to some of the things that the New London Kiwanis is, is doing? And <coughs> we've had a couple of biggies recently here that we Yeah, we, we do a lot of big things. But, uh, you know, you hit it the nail on the head. Uh, one of the things that brought me in uh, back 2004 was the Reading is Fundamental program. Right? Education is such a, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, documentary Waiting for Superman, which is a snapshot of the educational system in the United States today. I, I, I like this much, I bought the DVD, yeah. I have it home. <laughs> well, one of the things that you learn and there and, and by reading is, is, a, is that our kids are doing pretty poorly in school. And one of the main reasons that they are is because they're not learning to read as they should and when they should. So when I got involved, I, one of the first things I dove right in and I took over as director is the Reading Fundamental Program. And what that is is we provide adult readers to daycare centers and we give out books to these kids several times a year. It was a real eye-opener to me because I grew up in a house where my mother read us to sleep every night. You know, Tom Swift and things like that. Um, and I had books everywhere. I, f I found out these kids, some of these kids didn't have, this was the first book they ever had, they, their own book. They didn't have books, uh, which was a real eye-opener. And I found, you know, through research, you know, how, how much better kids' lives are when they learn to read and write at, at a young age properly and how much more of a productive life they have and a productive person in society. So that was one of the things that, that really got me going. I, I, like I said, I dove right in, took over that program, and still am involved. I still read. I'll be reading uh, this Thursday morning at 9.30. Uh, and, you f and it's just <laughs> wonderful. You feel like a kind of cross between Art Linkletter and Bill Cosby. You know, and you got 15, 3- and 4-year-olds, and it's just you get more out of it than, than the kids do, but it's, it, it's fantastic. So that's one of the things that really got me going. Uh, the second thing was the international program, was the iodine deficiency disorder program. I mean, I, I was amazed. Uh, Kiwanis is the fundraising arm with UNICEF. UNICEF is kind of the boots on the ground, but we are behind them raising the money uh, with that program and managed to do it, I, you know, managed to wipe it out. Wipe out iodine deficiency order in, in, in the world. Which is the leading cause of preventable mental retardation yeah. in the world, as well as uh, other uh, issues such as thyroid uh, uh, issues, uh, uh, goiters, and things of that nature. And uh, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a well, well thought out, well executed uh, a program at a global level. So, and a point is, and I think that it's important too, that Lions, Rotary, Kiwanis are all international. We all have a presence around the globe. And that uh, we're representing uh, people everywhere. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think it's important that people understand that. Sam, well, why don't you give us a little bit of an overview of uh, some of the more, uh, what you're doing here in town. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, well. Uh, in town, uh, we've been, our New London Lions Club have, has been helping the New London Community Meal Center. Uh, once a month, our club volunteers and serves dinner uh, on, on uh, a Friday evening uh, to the, indigen to the indigen indigent community members that come in for meals. Right, and uh, and you've had a marvelous contact there. I mean, Milt Cook was a yeah. longtime member of your club, was yeah. uh, uh, very active with the Meal Center. Yeah, Milton Cook was president of the Meal Center, and he passed away about a year and a half. And uh, he, uh, because of that, our club also got involved in the Southeastern Connecticut Turkey Drive, in which um, we donated about uh, $1,500 a year to... Uh, to Milton and the uh, New London Community Meal Center, and they put together baskets, dinner baskets for uh, 
low-income families to enable them to have Thanksgivings. Uh, we also, our New Run Alliance also currently involved in a program in, in which we help, uh, help pay the rent for the New London um, community, um, um, the Center of the Blind, which is located in the, uh, in the Martin Center. Uh, the Center of the Blind uh, provides uh, optical assistance to those that um, uh, have uh, vision, vision issues. Um, we also uh, help um, whenever there's a need, someone, for one reason or other, we just helped uh, someone who needed a box spring and a mattress. So we helped that, that particular person. That was an indigent individual. And we also provide uh, a, um, individuals who are in need uh, because of income, uh, 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 free uh, eyeglass exams, uh, excuse me, eye exams, prescriptions if needed, and then uh, we provide them free glasses. And uh, we're very, very fortunate uh, that we have a local optometrist who provides uh, those uh, free, the free uh, services for, for these new London residents. And uh, I, I may add that um, if someone is watching us from uh, out of New London, let's say Plainfield or Waterford, if someone is, uh, is in need of um, uh, vision, vision assistance, then they can always contact their local Lions Club and uh, the, they'll, they'll be pu uh, put in touch with uh, someone who can assist them. So, uh, and, and it's especially important for youth. So uh, our Alliance Club over the past year has helped about a uh, half dozen kids uh, get glasses. And that's real important uh, when, you, when, you, when you start starting off um, in school and if you're having difficulty with, with uh, seeing things, it makes learning much more difficult. So we're, we're very, very, very proud of that particular program that we've uh, in initiated. Mm -hmm. That's a great program. Yeah. Folks, uh, if you are uh, interested in participating in tonight's program, uh, as we are always here on City Focus, we're live, and the numbers are on the screen. If you'd like to give us a call and offer some thoughts or commentary, or if you have any questions about uh, either the Kiwanis or the Lions Club, uh, this is a good opportunity. Or uh, maybe you might be interested in getting involved with a project, or perhaps if uh, what you've been hearing has spurred an interest that maybe you'd like to uh, uh, perhaps even join either of the uh, organizations, uh, please call at 860-440-3154. Or if you're out of the local calling area, you can call us at 800-253-2285. Um, John, when and where and how yeah. often is the uh, New London Kiwanis Club meeting, if somebody wanted to track us down? Well, Kiwanis meets uh, every Thursday at noon at Mitchell College in the Clark Center. There's a small meeting room off of the cafeteria. You can't miss it. Uh, for anyone who's interested in coming, it's a nice deal. You get a great free lunch out of it. Uh, you get, we have very interesting speakers on all, all kinds of topics every week, a different speaker. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, so you come and you'll learn a little bit about uh, Kiwanis, see if it's something for you, without any type of commitment. Nobody's going to jump you. <laughs> so you've got to join, you know, and just come, see if what, you, what we do is what you like, and, you know. Well, I know last week at our, our annual scholarship award presentations, we had a number of guests, and uh, the club was uh, proud to present three $3,000 scholarships uh, to local students who are going to college. That's tremendous. That's yeah. a lot of money. You know, uh, that's, it that's, is. That's a, that's a, you must have fundraised a lot of, uh, big time this past year. Well, well that's, huge. That, that's paid for out of an endowment. Oh, you're very fortunate. Well, what we've been able to do with this endowment, and think, Marty, uh, you've been there for 26 years. I mean, you know, even before I got here, they were giving, what, a couple hundred dollars uh, in scholarships. And every year, this year we were, the board of directors, Kwanis board of directors, were as ecstatic to be able to extend it from two three thousand dollar scholarships to three three thousand dollar scholarships. We had seventy six kids that applied, 
I mean, we have a we have a whole committee that works really hard. You imagine going through seventy six applications to pick out the best ones. You know, you got to go through all their resumes, their applications, through all their through all their transcripts. I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Did your uh, committee just go through New London students or no, these all? No, no. We 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 uh, solicit students from uh, New London, Waterford, uh, East Lyme, um, Montville, Montville, Fitch. Ledger, uh, Grasso Tech, St. Bernard's, uh, and not all, but many of the schools that we have just listed have key clubs, which is a high school level uh, club that we sponsor. It's kind of like a service club for high school kids, mm -hmm. your Jaleo program. Mm -hmm. right. um, and um, some of the other schools that we uh, solicit or ask for applicants. Uh, it's because they have got students from those other schools that have key clubs. So that key club link is important in terms of the schools that we are asking uh, students. We also ask adult students and return to college students to apply as well. One of our applicants was a prior recipient and uh, he had reapplied and, uh, and received another scholarship this year. So that was... So that's, that's just a lot of money to, for scholarships. I meant, look, up, our club gives... Uh, three five hundred dollar scholarships and we give them to um, qualified New London High School students who are going who have expressed an interest to go to college and we send that money is sent directly to the bursary to the correct well, and we do that as well I mean so it's not beer money it's right. it's going to school exactly. <laughs> and, and our and now we're going to be at uh, New London High School class day uh, in a within a couple of weeks to present those, um, or at least we're going to be presenting certificates of recognition to those three students. Are you, is, uh, are you guys going to be, at, do you guys go to this event also? It, uh, we, our participation has been uh, on and off. It has not been solid every year, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. Sam, you need to tell us about when you meet. Oh, yes, okay. We meet on Tuesday, so we met today, earlier for lunch. Uh, we meet at Goldie's uh, from 12.15 to 1.30. And again, uh, all are welcome to come to our meetings as well. Um, we have uh, pretty good lunch. The first, whenever, if should you have an interest in lions, your first lunch or dinner. We have a dinner on the third Tuesday of every month. Also, that's that would be free. Um, the first two, uh, the the third Tuesday dinner begins at 6 p.m. So we ha our next meeting is going to be June 18th. So you're meeting twice a month. Right. Is now, that Goldie's too? Yes, that's a Goldie's too. Now, we used to meet every Tuesday of... Now, you, you meet every Thursday? Every Thursday. Of every month? Of every, every month. Week. So, that's, so that's 52 weeks? Yes. That's right. Well, that's tremendous. I mean, our club used to do that, and then we were the only club in the state doing that. Uh, d does every Kiwanis club in the state do, meet, do no, that also? We're one of the few that's left. That yeah. Have you always been doing that every Thursday? Every Thursday? Well, it used to be Wednesdays, and we changed to Thursdays a year or two ago. Yeah, that was when. But the following we meet every every, every every week, and uh, and then we have one meeting a month at six o'clock in the evening at Bean and Lee. That's an extra. So that's, that's an, an extra, an extra meeting, meeting for people that can't make the the meetings at lunch. So you have makeups. Yeah, so yeah you we make do that, and also for, for there's a lot of people who are interested in the club, who can't get to a daytime meeting because of their jobs. So we have an evening meeting. So they can get there and learn about we it. We also encourage uh, what we call interclubbing, which is traveling and visiting other clubs, which is another way to get makeups, as you would call it, because we do keep track of attendance and uh, uh, we do not have strict attendance requirements. And I, I can't speak for your organization, but uh, you know, attendance is certainly encouraged. But a way to make up attendance would be to go visit the New Haven Club or right. the Wallingford Club, the Cheshire Club, yeah, our, something our, along those lines. Yeah, our club is similar in, in that in that respect. Um, there are alliance clubs that are meeting almost every day of the week in, in the in the general area. I think there are more. Uh, I think from what you described, there are more alliance clubs uh, in this general vicinity than Absolutely. there are, than there the are the North 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 clubs. But Rotary has. Rotary, I believe, has attendance requirements. They do. So you gotta attend. Um, if you if if you're if you miss a few meetings, you could you could hypothetically get kicked out. At least in the New London New London, New London Rotary. Well, it's interesting. Lions, Lions, they're as far as the name recognition goes, they're they're much better than the Kiwanis. Because when I say to people, 
Well, do you know about Kiwanis? No. But they all know about Lions and the Vision, you know, because you're tied to that. Kiwanis is not as, not as much. True. I mean, it's very it's true. true. Yeah. I mean, it the is. Rotary and the Lions are both better yeah, known than Kiwanis. I mean, Kiwanis I, yeah. I'm not going to uh, kid anybody about that. We're working hard to overcome that and, and become the club of choice around <laughs> the world. Well, I don't know if people know this, but uh, in New London, New, New London's unique. Uh, I know that you can become a member of Lions and Kiwanis at the same time. You have one member. But not Rotary. You, you can't, if you're a Rotarian, you cannot be a you cannot be join your club or our club at the same time. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I didn't mention, and may I take the sure, liberty? Please do. Uh, one of the interesting things is that we we are at a point uh, financially where we are able to help a, a number of nonprofits in addition to funding the Little League and other things. Um, we have a link on our website. And on this link, you can go on. If, you're a, a, if you have a, a good thing that's going to be helping kids and you're a nonprofit organization, you can request that we give out money to you. I can tell you this year alone, we, we gave out $6,000 this way. Uh, and some things are already budgeted, like we, we budget uh, heavy hitters which is a great program run by Kent Ward. Uh, we, it's we a boxing budget, program, correct? A boxing program, but it, it, he runs it on his own nickel. You know, it's uh, anything that really, really great like that. You send us a request. I, I know that we do things with the uh, Neighborhood Alliance. We adopt families at Christmas time. We do a lot of different things that way. So if you are listening and you happen to be involved in uh, a program like this that, that benefits kids and you need some help, Go to newlondonkiwanis.org and hit our link and ask for some money. And if we, the board meets once a month, and if we can give it to you, we will. That's our, our, our goal is not to have any money at the end of the year. That's kind of what we do. And, and we've been really lucky. And it's kind of great. It feels really good when you're sitting in that board meeting and you know you just gave a really worthy program a few hundred bucks. You know, it's... It's a fantastic program, so I didn't want to... And the irony is, I mean, in today's economy in the last few years, uh, the demand for services and requests that organizations that we represent, uh, the demand is high. And the need is there because people have been you know, suffering in the community. I mean, it's not as if everybody's rolling in it. There, uh, there are families and, and youth that uh, need the Lions Club, and they need the Kiwanis Club, and they need the Rotary Club, and and the things that we are able to provide. And often it's a matter of uh, us reaching out, but also people reaching out to the organizations as well. Uh, do, do you normally have speaking programs that you Yes. Are, uh, we, as I said, we have two meetings a month, and normally we have at least one of the two meetings that we have a speaker. Um, I, I do want to mention that both of both uh, Lions and Kiwanis, as well as periodically Rotary, we don't get, we're not necessarily looking for uh, recognition. We're, we're looking for, we like to get free publicity, uh, always. And uh, luckily, our club has recently had, uh, we sponsor every year the, mi uh, the Military Person of the Month Award. Um, we do that once a year. And uh, we honored someone from the, um, from the USS North Dakota this past year. So we got into the resident on the front page of the story. I'm just going to just yep. briefly interrupt you on that. In that, that program, the, the service person of the month, uh, that is something that's in conjunction with the South Chamber, Chamber of Commerce and the Navy League. Right. And they, they rotate through the different service organizations. Do you guys do it too? Yes, we do. Every August, it's our month. So we're involved with that program as well. And it's, a, it's, it's one of the best programs yeah. we do every year. I, I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had uh, this year as our MC. We I invited Mark Nickerson of uh, Geico, Geico yeah. and uh, he was tremendous. He's done this a, f a few times. Um, De uh, Denny Hicks from the southeastern the chamber, ch from the yeah. chamber he, he usually he comes. represents the chamber yeah, when, he comes, when they come to us. Right, and he was ill this year, so Mark pinch hit for him, and he was he was great. He uh, ad libs really well. That's a good gift to get. Yes, and in fact, here's a picture of him on the front page of the resident. Um, and I was depicted on the front page when we had our 90th anniversary. Um, the, to, while I have these uh, props here, I just wanted to show you. Um, 
this was a, uh, a flag that was given to me by our current district governor, Jan Miller. This was a flag, this is an example, this is when I was at the United Nations uh, a couple years ago. Uh, this, was give, this was a friendship banner that was given to me from a gentleman from, uh, uh, from Italy, an Italian club. And uh, also I got a, a banner from uh, past international director Scott Santos, who paid a visit to us on, our, on this, our 90th anniversary. Our club has also been fortunate. We've had a, a past inter an international director, and that was uh, Joe Raub. In fact, uh, we, uh, one of the three scholarships that we give to Newland High School students is named after Joe Raub. Um, uh, following up on something that ha uh, came up earlier, we also, uh, the New London Alliance also supports uh, Fidelco, Hospice of Southeastern Connecticut, Camp Rising Sun, the Homeless Hospitality Center, uh, the South we Southeastern Connecticut Women's Center, the Southeastern Connecticut Center for the Blind, as I mentioned, uh, as well as the um, Low Vision Center of Eastern Connecticut. And uh, I, there's always something going on with, with Lions, and just as w just the same thing as Kiwanis. If someone has an interest in something, we can usually create a program to fit that person's uh, desire to, to assist the community. I think that's a key, is that uh, it certainly is with the Kiwanis Club, but it's, it's member-driven. Um, you get your, you get, that's how you get people involved, is that they feel that they're bringing and can contribute to the organization. Uh, we've got a variety of new members in our club. Uh, about four or five women have recently joined in the last year, 18 months, and they are taking the club by storm, and they have been extraordinary in their enthusiasm. And uh, You've had a few women as presidents, I believe. Well, we've got a, a lineup of women that are coming up to president following John, and we have had a number of women have been president. in. Uh, women have been in Kiwanis now since 1987, so it's 26 years. And uh, it's about the same time that Lions, Lions started in the early, or early to mid 80s, and well, we've had we've had. Well, you were saying about it, uh, there's a place for everyone. You know, you come. This the, the gal who's I'm president. She's uh, president elect. She's going to be president on October 1st when we change over. This woman has taken us in new directions. I mean, her energy is phenomenal. And she gets us involved in all kinds of things that we would have never been involved in before. And I'm not going to tell her no. You know, I love her energy and I love where she's taking us. So he tells, tells me no. We won't tell <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'll tell him Marty no all the time. But I'm excited. I'm excited about our club because these women have infused new energy into our club. I mean, it's just it's fantastic where they're going to be taking us. So if you're at home watching us and you want to get involved and help the community, and you want to work on some type of interesting project, come to one of our meetings. Yeah, see what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we have two of our new, new members, uh, two, two of the women, are going actually to our international convention later this month, which will be in Vancouver. Uh, and I expect they're going to come back full of... Uh, Ideas. ...boatload of enthusiasm. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they'll be kind of jacked up. And uh, I know that when I went to my first international convention in 1990 in St. Louis, it was like... Uh, that's what really captured me into the organization. Just really, uh, holy smokes! This was Kalanis is an awful lot of neat stuff, and we ought to get get on board. And uh, Marty, why don't you talk a little bit about? It? You've had 26 years. You've been a past distinguished governor. You've been on the board of the KFNE. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of those experiences? Well, I. I uh, for starters, I, I really love Kiwanis. I've, to me, I've derived tremendous uh, benefit. And when John read the uh, objects of Kiwanis uh, at the top of the program, uh, you know, one of them has to do with the enduring friendships that you make. And that's been so true. I mean, I go to Kiwanis meetings, and uh, these, are my, these are my friends. I mean, I, these are people who I hold dear to me. And it's uh, uh, very, very special. And at every level that I've had the opportunity to, to serve, whether it be as a lieutenant governor, uh, overseeing a group of six clubs in the shoreline of Connecticut, uh, the district governor of New England, and also with that, participating at an international level, 
I mean, I've got contacts and friends that I've made literally all around the world, which is extraordinary. I mean, you, it's hard to, again, you don't join Kiwanis or Lions to, to, to do that per se, but you know, you give a little bit and, and what you get back sometimes is just is breathtaking. And uh, it's been good for me and I, I uh, try to infuse that level of enthusiasm for those who participate in our club and in the organization in general. It's just, uh, uh, I get it, I like it. I think we got a great mission and uh, it's something that uh, it's exciting to contribute and also to watch some of these new folks get them infused and because you can't do it yourself, it's a team game. And uh, I think that's what's, what's very, very important. Um, Marty, just briefly, would you would you tell our our listening viewing audience about KPTI? KPTI is the signature program of the New England District of Kiwanis. Uh, it is a program that's funded by the Kiwanis Foundation of New England, which all the Kiwanis members and clubs belong to by definition. And uh, we have a an endowment with a little over three million dollars that. Uh, uh, funds this KPTI program, which is a partnership between a Tufts Medical Center in Boston and New England Kiwanis, providing research, education, development, and training programs in the area of pediatrics. And this has been up and running since 1980. So we're, you know, we're into, our, into our 30 years, 30 plus years now. And uh, it's a program that has been copied in many, many places now. And it's ex exciting and it's exceptional. And for members of our organization, I encourage them to go to Boston when they have an open house uh, to see what we're doing there. Because to see is to believe and understand what you're being asked to support. Sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult when they say, well, you know, what's a KPTI or an IDD or whatever the acronym may be uh, to get juiced on it. But when you get an opportunity to you know, touch it and feel it and see the, the, the mm -hmm. net results, it can get you really energized, and it gives you you feel like you're buying into something really worthwhile. What I what I the way I look at KPTI, and you made a really good description of it, but I look at it this way: down on the deck plate, you got a you got a doctor in a, in, in an ER somewhere with a kid that comes in with a traumatic injury, and he doesn't he's not sure how to treat it or how it's been treated in the past. He can go on this database, pull it right up instantaneously and see what other doctors have done mm -hmm. in this specific type of injury. And I think that's, that. I, I just think that's a fantastic program. <clears throat> well, and I, and I, and I agree. <clears throat> and I've had the privilege of serving uh, three years as president of the Kiwanis Foundation of New England, uh, overseeing the funding of that particular program. And um, uh, again, it's a humbling experience. I mean, it's a lot of fun, a lot of work, but uh, getting people energized for something you believe in is, uh, and get you get you going, and I, I really enjoy that stuff. I mean, I, giving back to the community, uh, whether it's through uh, the Lions or the Kiwanis or whatever level you're comfortable with, uh, I think that's important. And that's the, the th central theme of tonight's program, ladies and gentlemen, is giving back to your community at whatever level that you're comfortable with. I mean, whether it's here in town in New London, whether it's coaching the Little League team or uh, uh, flipping pancakes or what, playing golf in our golf tournament, whatever it may be. When was that this year? Uh, it was last, May right, it was last month, and uh, we raised close to 15 grand on that. Shanikasa? Uh, it was, that was our net. We did very well this year. Yeah, our best ever, actually. <clears throat> so, uh, and that's how we are able to support much of what we're doing over the course of the year. And... Um, what I like, but, what, but, I, what but, I like but, is what I'm hearing about the the Lions too. Is they're they're a hands-on organization. Kwan New London Kwanis is a hands-on organization. We do things, and and one of the things that I'm hearing from him is that you you know like we have we have members who are who are members, but they're interested in this program here. So you know, we don't have the requirements. We don't have the. Uh, you know the re the attendance requirements, and it's not a big uh, financial just, thing. We're, we're I mean, you can, people are able to give. It's right. You got you come. You want to just read? We have we have one woman who just reads. She comes and she just loves to read. So, you got a question? No, we got a call. So oh, we're okay. gonna go to the phones. All right. Good evening, and you're on the air. Hi, Marty. It's Nancy. And how are you tonight? Good. I've been watching your show, and it's very interesting. And it's three great groups um, doing. Uh, all this volunteering. I was 
question, I would like to know if any of your groups are interested in raising any money for the Sandy Hook playground where Andrew, where Angels play. Uh, we had Bill Laven from the New Jersey State Firefighters Mutual Benefit Benevolent Association uh, come to our park and wreck with a presentation. And we are going to, we have been designated uh, to London at Riverside Park to get a playscape uh, in honor of one of the uh, little girls that died, uh, Charlotte. I don't have her name in front of me. And we're hoping it might get put in uh, in beginning of August. Um, they are looking for us to do fundraising. We won't have to, my understanding is we would not have to pay for this playscape, but they would like groups to try to raise money to give to the uh, New Jersey firefighters to build, they're gonna build 26 of them across New Jersey, New York, uh, and Connecticut. And they come and they pick the site out, they interview the parents, the parents pick out what type of playscape they're going to have and what the personality of the child was. And they loved Riverside Park because the little girl, when she used to go out to recess, loved the shade. And there was uh, one area up there that they just fell in love with where a bunch of trees are and so on and so forth. But I was wondering if any of your groups would be interested in trying to raise money. And if you do, you could talk to um, Victor Spinato with the New London Fire Department and Wayne, Wayne Vendetto Jr.'s wife, Karina Vendetto, is helping him. I know they have shirts and I know they have bracelets. But. Um, Nancy, I, I, think, I think that uh, uh, that would be a worthwhile thing for any of the local service organizations for consideration, and I'm, uh, uh, I will make an effort to contact uh, Mr. Spinato or, or Mr. Hallisey and, uh, uh, on behalf of Kiwanis, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure Sam uh, can handle the, uh, the Lions Club. That'd be a great event to work on. And I know that the New London uh, Lodge of Elks is, uh, is, is already working on, on making a contribution, I believe, through the State Lodge of Elks. Yes, I heard that the other day. Um, could, you would have to uh, contact them to see what groups already gave, so people aren't stepping on each other's toes. Um, and uh, we're, Park and Rec is, uh, we're thinking of having our a fundraiser also from the Park and Rec Commission. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention, see if you are interested, but all three groups do a great job uh, for the community, and uh, I think everybody should be proud of you. Well, thank you very much thank for your, you. your kind words, and, and thank you for the uh, uh, suggestion to get tied in with this, uh, I think, very important uh, project up at Riverside Park. Talk about community okay. service. Nancy is very involved in community service and she, with Save Ocean Beach and with the Parks and Recs in the city. She spends countless hours, you know, providing service to the community. And I thank her. Thank you. And Nancy, thank you. For that. And if you want to see her, she's usually down at the beach these warm months in the yeah. evening here. That's yeah, right, her and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank bye, you, bye, Nancy. Bye, Nancy. Have a nice evening. I didn't get to ask her how much she was looking to raise, but. I think they'll go. They'll, go, they'll take anything. Because <laughs> yeah. I know that I can get people to help put it together whatever the, whenever that day or, or series of days comes up. Yeah, I think they're looking to put it into a collective pot because the, the, that pot is growing and they're building them as they get the funding and they keep moving along. So, but no one has already been selected, as she noted, and Riverside Park uh, is is a site that will be receiving uh, one of these playscapes. So, I think it's pretty uh, pretty exciting, and we should be very uh, honored to be chosen. I think there's one one playscape for each of the children that lost their life. Twenty six, right? Yeah, Twenty six playscapes. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what you said. Uh, um, folks, we're getting down to our last uh, five minutes. If you'd like to. Uh, uh, participate. Uh, the ice has now been broken. We've had our first phone call of the night, so uh, 
please feel free to give us a call and the numbers are on the screen. Um, you know, one thing that uh, we're involved with in Kiwanis is Key Club, and the Lions Club has a comparable program known as the Leo Club. Um, I'm going to toss it back to you guys to kind of explain what these programs are and and how they operate uh, within the organizations that we're representing. So we'll okay. Uh, the New London Lions currently does not sponsor a Leo's Club. However, uh, that's a relatively new thing for Lions, at least in this area. I think there are maybe five Leo's clubs in our particular district, District 23C. Um, and what that is is uh, um, a grouping of uh, kids that want to make a difference in the community and uh, fundraise and work together on a particular type of project. And usually uh, I, many of these clubs assist the host Lions Clubs on some particular project. Uh, we all, our New London Lions Club almost had it arranged three years ago, but it just just didn't work out. You need someone who, you need an adult as a as an overseer, a couple, one or two adults as, as dedicated overseers to, uh, to have this uh, function or this uh, a Leo's Club work. And someone who's who's going to be committed to do this, perhaps for um, three to five years. So many of these, many of the uh, uh, of the uh, overseers or or these project coordinators have kids of their own that will be members of the the Leos Club, and that's the that's the perfect type of combination. I think uh, I think it's a little bit different for Key Club though. Key Club's been, been around for a long, 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 long time, and the New London Kiwanis Club has, has certainly take been, money. Go ahead. Uh, been involved sponsoring Key Clubs uh, at the clubs, that, and I mentioned them earlier, uh, at local high schools, and um, uh, it's an opportunity for high school students to get involved in giving back to their school and community through you know, community service projects. Uh, there's leadership development because the, the structure of the organization is like the parent club, Kiwanis, where you've got a, a president and a vice president, treasurer, secretary. Lieutenant governor. There's lieutenant governors and a governor. There's actually, it's an international club. And they've got you know, Key Club International president and the whole international board. So there's opportunities for the high school kids to do things at many different levels. And they also interact with the local Kiwanis club in our case. Uh, and it's critical, especially around the holidays, where we work very closely with the Salvation Army. We do a Thanksgiving dinner where we're serving 100, 125 meals. Uh, we do bell ringing up at the Crystal Mall. Uh, we also host a Christmas party for the Salvation Army youth. But the bell ringing and the uh, Thanksgiving dinner in particular, I mean, without the kids' help, the high school kids, I mean, we'd be uh, having a tough time. Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back at New London High School there was a key club and I I was so always been dead already for yeah, years. I was always envy I always wanted to join it but I never never knew when the when the uh, activities were being held. You might have charted a different path for right? you. Might have been you know, might have been in <laughs> <laughs> You never know. <laughs> oh I did want to mention over here, um, I have a copy of our New London Lions original charter. Uh, we were chartered uh, August August uh, 15th, 1922, uh, and also way in the back there's a full page ad that appeared in the London Day to mark our 80th year of service in uh, New London. So, uh, just wanted to bring that up. You got a lot to be proud of. I mean, the Lions Club's been around a long time, and um, um, they do good work. I mean, I know that you guys, one of your fundraisers that you do is you do provide uh, food at the uh, home show. Home show up at Con College every year. But it's always an opportunity, you know, I'll go be able to see Sam. And I, the always, guys. I always go and get a sandwich and a soda every time but, I go. But this coming year, I hope that the three major civic organizations in town come to work together on one particular project. I love that. Well, Bud McAllister has been pushing for that. So, in any event, folks, we want to thank my guest, Sam Linder, and John Lester for coming to me.